What's up guys? This is uh, the explanation to my final troll level of Mario Maker 2. I know it's kind of sad, but uh, I'm ready to be done with this because it's kind of getting to be a trash game at this point. So, you know, with all the takedowns and stuff, which really, honestly, Mario Maker 2 is all about leaving your levels up and getting, getting popular, you know? And you just... It, I don't know, it, with, with all these takedowns, it just doesn't feel the same as it used to. So that, and I'm also just getting burned out of Mario Maker 2 and ready to move on, so. Yeah, this is my last level, but uh, it's been really fun to make. This took about two or three months to make. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty big project that I uh, made for my last level here. So um, I was really, really happy with the outcome and I'm excited to show it off, so here we go. All right, so the first room, you may wonder why there are two launchers in the first place. Well, you can't stack launchers, right? So the way I'm getting two launchers in here is just by a broken track. And it's pretty simple, right? It just kind of teleports where you want it to based on the tiles of these ground blocks here. Um, so that's how there are two launchers, and then obviously when you hit the switch and then they, the launchers start falling, they'll hyperspeed upwards and squish you. And it's what's funny about this setup is that it looks like the launcher is just extending, and that's kind of funny on its own. It looks like it's just an extending launcher from the abyss or something. Very strange. So yeah. Um, so this is interesting. The reason why it stops shooting is because the, of the launcher getting overlaid. So when there are two launchers overlaid on top of each other, the launchers won't shoot. So right at the point that this launcher gets teleported, which I have slightly delayed, you know, I can put it this way to make it faster, but I have it delayed so that this launcher can shoot uh, a shellment at the player. Um, but when you have two launchers stacked on each other, then they'll stop shooting, which is, which is why they don't shoot. Yeah. Uh, this next room is, there's just nothing going on here. It's mostly just, um, to get you to stand under the launcher in the first room. So, if you notice, the, uh, the launchers actually change. So this one shoots a Shelmet, but this one will shoot a, um, a Goomba. So... It's just to like get you to stand under it if you haven't seen the Goomba come out already. And then hopefully they'll stand under it and get Goomba. So Um, but all you're supposed to do is go into the door. This is just a huge misdirection again to get them to stand under the launcher. And then haha, <laughs> the launcher switched and all that. <laughs> um, over here, so the whole idea with this was that they were supposed to kind of look ahead which never works in any level ever, so don't ever do this because it never works. Um, but the idea was they're supposed to look ahead and and see that there's like launchers here that are gonna shoot them once they come through the door. But when they come through the door, the screen is actually scrolled up to this point right here, so the launchers don't, I mean the, the cannons don't actually show up at first. And you'll also notice that this, there's no like block here or launcher or anything. It's all just to make it look like you can just go up here safely. But it's also supposed to be a reverse psychology. So like, oh, clearly it's supposed to go up here. So clearly it looks like the up here is going to be the safe path. So we should get out of the way of these cannons. And then they're like, no, that's too obvious. I definitely need to stay down here. But, um... The actual room that it takes you to is way on the other end over here. And this is where the scroll stop is, right? So down here, it just a, it's just a time, time spike ball thing that rolls in. And then it'll scroll the screen at exactly the point the cannons shoot. So that's all that happens there. Um, and then there's a surprise uh, on-off block. Haha, <laughs> so it's actually a different room. Nobody ever noticed that. But uh, I put it in anyways, just because it's interesting. Um, over here is the trigger to kill the launcher. And with this exact setup, the 
the thwomp will be positioned such that it'll only trigger once you go exactly above the semi-solid and not anywhere before that. So you can like try to jump to trigger the switch, but you can't until you get like above it. So that's what this setup is for. Um, so up here, this is literally just, you can place, you can just place it like this. And uh, weird things happen when you do this. And I think the spike ball is the jankiest thing that you can do with this because most other things actually get spawn blocked by the item that you put here. So the spike ball is like the one of the only exceptions uh, for this tech. So yeah, it's really weird. There's a P switch behind it, which kind of pushes it down really fast. And then this is actually needed to, because um, if this were like a normal block, then it just obviously doesn't go in the ground at all. So you need an entity to be able to make it go in the ground like that. And then, um, and then you just kind of go in what looks like its line of path, which it isn't really at all. So uh, this troll down over here is kind of, it gives you weird momentum, right? So what happens is that when you enter the room, this thwomp will uh, spring this uh, seesaw upwards, which pushes this guy above the screen so you can't see him. So, uh, like this. Yeah, so that's all that happens. And then he'll stop thwomping, obviously. So yeah, um, this guy is hidden above screen because of that. And then, um, and then, uh, this one way is here to, like, position the thwomp so that it'll only trigger once you get past this one way over here. Um, so the whole idea with this was that they see two ways they can die, right? They see a 50 and they see vines. So you can do pretty much anything and you're still going to get trolled here. And the reason is that if you try to hold right because you're trying to get away from the 50, then you'll just end up not going anywhere and there's like no momentum change so then the next time they'll come in they um they'll like think oh nothing actually happened last time so i can sit here safely but the troll actually happens when they sit here and and when they sit here you like come over to this corner of this block right here and for some reason it just kind of clips you into it and gives you like some weird leftwards momentum. So that's what's happening there. Um, so the solution here is to actually to hold right and then kind of go into the vine pit. And then the vines are obviously safety so that you can kind of hold up and get out of them. Because otherwise that'd be really awful to, you know, have to hold right uh, through the seesaw the whole time and, and like try to not land in the spikes. So I put these vines here for that. Alright, so this is really weird. Um, it's also kind of stolen. And I admit that I stole it, but I stole it from a very long dead collab. Uh, long dead meaning like it's been dead for a year. Like over a year. And the collab I'm talking about is actually a bandwagon collab which is one of the collabs that started right as the Bandwagon Discord server uh, got created. It, I did not find this on my own. It was somebody else who found this. I can't remember who, but um, yeah, it's been, it's been forever and nobody's used it. So I, I decided to finally use it myself. So it's really weird. The troll is straightforward. You just like run and fall off, right? So what's interesting about this is that these five fire flowers here, you know, you could put more to like make it infinite weight, but five fire flowers is actually ideal for this. And the reason is that this spike ball can actually go through the platforms with you. And I don't want that to happen because then that would just be really unfair spaghetti and then you would have to like keep doing it until you get it right. So the f so there are five fire flowers here which just so happens to barely balance the spike ball. So if you watch closely the if you watch the seesaws closely, 
they will kind of go down a little bit as the spike ball lands on them. Just a little bit, but that that um, motion of going down actually allows the spike ball to stay up there and not go through the platforms. So if if these seesaws are pushed down by any so any weight at all, really, then it'll be fine. See, you can kind of see that if you're over here on the seesaws, then you're much less likely to go through. What the heck is going on? Why was I able to go through earlier? It's really weird. Um, but yeah, so it's uh it's pretty careful. This this room is pretty carefully made actually uh, it got it went through a lot of revisions and then this is the final version that I came up with so um, the rest of this room is a little complicated it uses entity limit and um, you'll notice that there's all of these entities that are getting s that are that are all these note blocks here and these are to spawn entities in order to overload the limit of the room um, so this spike ball is uh, is using a broken track, and then they just kind of hit all of them simultaneously. Um, you'll also notice this hidden block detector over here. I'll explain that later. Um, so, well, I, I'll, I can explain it right now, actually. So, the first thing that happens is that they'll get kind of scared by this one-way block contraption thing here, and then they'll kind of go down here, and most, which most people did, and then avoid the shelmet. Um, but obviously they'll see the shelmet and then try to jump for it. But there's a hidden block and that's where the hidden block detector comes in. So you'll notice that the bomb serves as one entity to overload the limit. But when the bomb, when the hidden block is activated, the bomb explodes and there's no longer an entity here. So when the bomb explodes, then that means down here, uh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> um, down here, the entity that's getting spawn blocked is, is from this block right here. And it's a POW. So what the POW is doing is blocking this muncher from moving forward. And this also uses a broken trap right here, right? So this piranha here, um, will travel along the bottom, and just like the first two blocks that it comes across, it'll stop there and then teleport to wherever those two blocks are. So, if I start it from here, the piranha teleports up there because of these two blocks. If I delete these two blocks, then the piranha goes over there. So, you can sort of see how this is set up, right? So. In order to delete, in order to get rid of these blocks and to make the piranha move, I have to uh, basically destroy them. So what happens is, again, this muncher will come forward and blow up these blocks if the entity is overloaded only. But if it's not overloaded, then the pow will spawn, which blocks the muncher from moving. So there'll be like a, a pow right on top of this, um, right on top of this cloud here. So hopefully that makes sense. This bomb right here is to is to destroy the thwomp. So there's a breakable block right here that this, that'll destroy the thwomp once the player gets close enough. Um, because otherwise you can kind of see the setups. And, you know, just a random thwomp there isn't really very good. So yeah, that's why that's why it's not there. Um, and then this, of course, this smiley face is kind of a disguise for the broken track setup, which exists directly below the smiley. So that's why I just have this dumb smiley here. So, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything here. So again, the order of the operations is that they come over here, realize they missed the shell, and then jump, right? And then that activates the hidden block detector which means that the entities are no longer overloaded. Now, the second time they come in, they'll grab the shell. They don't need to hit the hidden block, because why would they? And now the entities are overloaded, because the bomb is still there and everything is in place. Now, if they put the helmet on, 
the entities are not overloaded because, you know, putting on a Shelmet makes there be one less entity. So the Prana should be back in its normal spot, which is over here. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. Um, it's pretty, it's a pretty wild room here. And obviously um, the way I have this is the Thwomp will only spawn when they uh, throw, the, throw the shell into the block. So then obviously when they come over here, then the Thwomp will be here and then trigger this, uh, this shell up here. So that is how that works. It's a really cool room, actually. I really enjoyed this room quite a bit, and uh, the setups are very cool in it. So yeah. Okay, uh, CP1 room is right here. Um, so basically, I had to like consolidate things into sort of this this sec little um, in-between section here which is used for both this room over here and the CP1 room. So this up here is the trigger for the P-switch when, um, when they spawn in from the checkpoint after getting key death, right? So after getting key death, this coin will appear here, which, you know, is like a red coin entity limit thing. And then it'll like spawn block this. So what's happening up here is that this... Let's see if it works. Yeah, it works. So, um, this muncher comes, will get spawned from the spike ball, which sort of stops this spike ball from going into the P-switch. And then when they collect the coin, the, the block will despawn the muncher, and then, like, it'll just go into the P-switch, if that makes sense. And then here's the infinite P-switch setup. Very simple. Um, so yeah, these guys up here are all to overload the entities, and fun fact, doors contribute to the spawn blocking entity limit, so I just had an extra pair of doors, so that's two more entities for this room, so I just decided to put the doors up here, because why not? And, uh, there's this one extra muncher here, because, uh, it's just one too many that, you know, so all of the Koopalings are um, also contribute to the entity limit, the spawn blocking entity limit. So that's really helpful for saving entities. You know, because at first I, I had like 16 munchers up here and that's obviously way too much and way too many um, sprites that I could be using elsewhere. So luckily I found out that Koopalings and Boom Boom contributes to the entity limit. So this is really, really nice. And this boom boom, likewise down here, also serves as a damage boost. So you so you take damage from him, and he contributes toward the entity limit, which is kind of a win-win. Then he just kind of goes on this track over here, because you know when he falls, then he makes a giant sh he makes this screen shake. So don't want that to happen. So I just kind of catch him over here. Um. So I think that's it for this. All right, so the first thing that happens in this room, right, is that this pow will come over and hit the spring and kind of go back into its into the void over here. Um, so for starters, the reason why it stops on the next time is because of this coin block. And when you come into this room the first time throughout through this door, the switch will be off, and um, which means that this up here will. Uh, this potable will come down and melt the ice block. And um, that's why it goes through it the first time. So what else happens on the blue state? This guy will despawn. This is very important because it it uh, it prevents the uh, the pow that this uh, thwomp spawns. It prevents it from going down. So then, um, yeah, I think that's all that happens on the blue state, actually. Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, yeah, <laughs> simple as if you know what's going on here. Um, so, when they spawn on the red state, which is the second time they spawn in this room, this pal will stop here, and then the pal will come down from this, from this thwomp up here. Why does it come down? That's because this spike ball is spawning on the red state. 
And what's nice about these clouds is that when you put a cloud directly below a spike ball, it'll start rolling and, and just basically die because it rolls into a wall. But the second time you come in, obviously this, this, uh, this cloud will be gone. And then when you come in through this door, the spike ball will be back because it just, it always respawns. But then this cloud won't be here, so the spike ball comes down and destroys this cloud. And that's, this cloud will, is, is what's preventing the POW from coming down on the blue state. Which is the first time you come into the checkpoint room, if that makes sense. So, the POW will come down, but why, why does the piranha not show up? That's because you're scrolling the screen over uh, from this, from hitting this block. And what's happening is you're spawning in this potobo under this piranha. This potobo has a ice block behind the coin, and by spawning the potobo in, you are melting the coin which then spawns this launcher in. And then this this launcher's purpose is to prevent the piranha from moving over. But if you don't go for the coin, then you're not spawning in the in the potobo, which means this launcher will not be here, which means that the piranha will go into position. And that's how I make three different trolls for the checkpoint. It's pretty cool. And um this took, again, a long time to make and refine, um, but it's it's actually quite simple. So this this right here, this, this little uh, spike ball, is actually to hit the switch once you come over here. Because, like, you know, when you come in through this door, you're on the blue state, but they need to be able to go through the door. So, essentially, this spike ball is just to turn the switch back on so that, you know, the, the POW can sort of stay behind this block all the same, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, this is for the P-switch state up here. This is for the fish. Um, so when you when you spawn from the checkpoint after key deathing, you, there'll be a P-switch active, and then all of this stuff up here will spawn. So what happens is, this is a classic, you know, switch change muncher setup. So like, um, let me see if I can show it. It's, uh, oops. So, yeah, what happens is the switch activates. Uh, uh, let me just put this over here. That's what happens. So that that's how the uh, fish spawns. And because the P-switch is active, you can't use conveyors because the conveyors are stopped, which is really annoying. So I had to make this setup. Uh, just to get the fish. It's like three whole entities for <laughs> for one fish. Um, but yeah, kind of costly, but it's it uh, it has a good payoff. Yep, so that's how that works. So again, this thwomp, uh, oops. This thwomp over here is not only triggering the POW to come down, but it's also triggering this on-off switch at the same time. So you see it, it's kind of positioned above the on, uh, the, the switch block and the POW pusher downer thingy. Um, I think that's pretty much all for that part. Now this part is a little bit trickier. Um, it's, it's, a uh, pretty messy as you can see, but, uh, it's, this is the, uh, this is the launcher that'll, like, shoot up really quickly. Um, yeah, so this is as tall as the launcher can be. So, the first thing that happens, right, is this is Wilfred's tech. So, all you do is, like, push the clown car into the launcher. And then when, when the ground below the launcher disappears, then it'll shoot upwards. So, by grabbing the power, you are making the ground below it disappear. And then it just shoots upwards, like, immediately. And that is why, that's why that happens. Um, so, by having this muncher here, you can actually, uh, you can keep the clown car in place and still enable the launcher to enter the clown car at the same time. Which is really weird. So, the muncher there is actually as a necessary entity. 
for this to happen. Now, the thing about this setup is that th since the launcher moves, I have to have absolutely nothing behind the launcher when the clown car dies. Because what's happening, right, is that the launcher is entering the clown car and then the clown car is dying before the launcher can go all the way up there to the clown car. So you already know that clown cars and launchers are super jank, right? And Nintendo made a patch where anything behind the launcher, if the, lo if the clown car dies, anything that was in the clown car will also die if there is anything solid behind it whatsoever. So in order to make there be nothing behind it, I have to kill this muncher. And killing the muncher involves activating this POW block right here, which is linked to this bomb right here. So the purpose of this bomb is to explode the block in it and activate this POW block. So let me see if I can actually do something about this here. So instead of a POW, I'm going to put like a block under here to sort of show what happens. All right, so now you can see how it works. So without this, without the POW, which kills the muncher, this is what happens. It just dies. Why does it die? Because of this muncher. The muncher is preventing the the launcher from staying in place because because of the what I explained earlier. But since this is here, then this this happens. Notice that the the cannon over here is responsible for killing the lo the clown car. So the whole purpose of this convoluted setup is just to make it look like the launcher moves upwards really quickly. And, and just stays up there after after it moves. And it's it's pretty much purely for comedic value. You know, there's like nothing else to that other than com comedy. So that's how that works. This muncher's purpose is to prevent them from coming back through the pipe after they get trolled in it. So that's the only reason that's there. Um, over here, the reason that this changes based on P-Switch state is because of this coin right here. So, you'll notice that the first time you go through here, um, the first time you go through here, there's no block. There's no question block there. And that's because of the coin that I just deleted. So, this coin serves to, um, once it's solid, which we can just kind of grab a block from for now, so once it's solid like this, then there'll be a block there. So magically, you'll, you're you're able to win after that point. Um, you'll also notice that the launcher that will come up to spit you in the pipe does not appear until the P switch state is active, and that's because of the P, P block behind it over here. So this setup works uh, pretty simply. This is, a, this is a pretty simple setup here. It's uh, literally just broken track, which is kind of a no-brainer at this point. And all it is is just... So when the launcher... Uh, so, so I have a note block, right? The note block is what's teleporting the launcher. And... The, if the if the launcher is sitting on top of the note block, if it's like currently bouncing on the note block at the same time it's being teleported, then after it's teleported, it will shoot upwards. Just like that. So essentially all that's happening is that they are scrolling the screen after after they charge up for their jump, they're scrolling the screen and then that spawns the launcher, which which uh, makes it basically perfect timing uh, to enter the pipe. Unfortunately, not everybody fell for this because they either jumped too short or they uh, didn't trust the jump enough. But uh, for those who did fell for it, it was an amazing ending and I'm really happy with how this turned out. So yeah, this was, uh, this was really fun. The other important thing to note here is that um, for whatever reason, 
I didn't used to have this spike ball up here, but the spike ball's purpose is to break the scroll stop after they, uh, after they key death. The reason I'm breaking the scroll stop is because when they, when they were to come up here, they would get way too eager and just jump right away while the screen was still kind of getting into position, if that makes sense. So what would end up happening is that they would be still ahead of the screen scrolling while, while they were jumping, which, uh, which caused this to delay like a lot. And then that by delaying, it would uh, cause a lot of spaghetti and confusion. So by breaking the scroll stop, that issue doesn't happen anymore. So that's, that's why the screen is scrolling after you key death. And then obviously, in order to prevent the, uh, the bomb from dying from all the POWs in this room, I just have it in the claw up here with a flop, and that's how that stuff works. So I think that's everything. The last thing to note is that this spring right here um, will not spawn, and even though it doesn't spawn, it still affects the shell for whatever reason. So. Yeah, it's, it's pretty weird. Alright, so for this part it's pretty simple. It's just a bumper under the lava as you'd expect. Um, for this troll, the muncher will only come out when you hit this uh, brick block. And that's just because it's that's just what happens. So there's two pipes behind here, right? Um, and uh, munchers just go through spikes for whatever reason, so you can have like this wall of spikes. But if you put a spike right here, then this setup doesn't work, and because the muncher just comes out immediately for whatever reason. And if you put the cloud down here and the spike up here, it also doesn't work, so this is a pretty specific setup. Yeah, I don't know why this, why it has to be like this. And also, like, you can go in to where that cloud is. I can't have a one-way here because it also breaks this setup, so it's very finicky and really strange, but uh, that's... it has to be like this. Um, so yeah. Um, on the other side, we have a switch block down here, which this bomb will hit, um, and the, the switch is what... Uh, well, the switch uh, triggers this block right here, and that allows the player to kind of get yeeted up into this corner up here. Um, so that's why this block is here, so that you can kind of center yourself on this on this uh, question block in order to get trolled by this. Um, the ghosts also hide this spring up here, and um, without them you can kind of see how this would work. Uh, let me see if I can grab a switch. Alright, so you can see what happens. There's a spring here. And then the spring just kind of comes out. It's very strange. And like, it, it even goes above the muncher. So I think this is kind of normal physics. But uh, yeah, that's just what happens. Um, so that's all for this. Um, also very simple over here. The reason this bomb blows up immediately is because of hidden blocks behind it. These are to prevent a soft lock up here. So the hidden blocks, when you hit them, will explode the bomb immediately, which if you're still in the shell when you jump up here, that will uh, that will make you take damage and make you lose your shell. So um, that's the troll there. The other troll is actually involving this muncher. So if you try to hit this muncher while you're in the shell, then you will lose the shell for whatever stupid reason. Um, and the what's weird about this is that if you're not in the dry shell and you have a shell mid on then you don't take damage it's very bizarre let me uh let me show you here okay so so you take damage with the shell on oh wait that's weird wait what okay now i'm confused what the heck is this so, okay, so if you're small, then you take damage, but I think if you're big, then you don't. Which would be... That is super weird. Okay, so that's just a thing. That makes no sense at all. So that's cool. 
Um, yeah, anyways, so that's the troll there. It's kind of a, it's, it's a little boring, but, you know, it's still pretty interesting, um, how this works, you know. Um, so over here is kind of interesting. So this saw is supposed to look really suspicious, and the pal, and it's supposed to look like something is definitely going to happen when you pick up the pal. And furthermore, I made it so that you can't really get up without getting on this pal and jumping up. But, uh, there is a sneaky little cloud behind the pal, so when you, when they pick it up, they notice that, uh, the, the pal is hiding a cloud, and they could have just jumped up there. So the whole idea here is that you're supposed to go up here to kind of troll yourself without the pal, just because everything look, down here looks super suspicious. This saw is not only suspicious looking, it's also hiding a conveyor under here which is uh, responsible for booping this piranha up ever so slightly. So what's happening is this P-switch is coming up and and flipping over, and the flipping over process, uh, for whatever reason, makes the piranha go up super slightly, just like that. And then you die to it like that. So that's all that's happening there. And then I obviously reuse the P-switch over here to help them to grab it. So that's pretty cool. And then what's also interesting is that when you jump up here, you actually can't see the P-switch because you're too high. And like, you can barely kind of see down to where that piranha is. So it's just enough so that you don't actually see the P-switch flipping over or anything like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, so this part is obviously a hidden block detector and a broken track. So the hidden block detector is down here. And basically what's happening is this bomb blows up this ice ice coin and this will hit the note block which will then push this over to here and then break the wall. So the reason I have it like this is because you know if if the uh, if the sw if the hidden block detector were up here they could like see the whole setup, right? which I don't want. So what they, they can see like the hidden block, or I mean the hard block over here, which would, you know, uh, break the wall. But obviously I don't want them to really see the hard block. So I made a setup where you can break the hard block below the lava with a hidden block detector. So that's pretty cool. Um, so then what happens obviously is that the screen scrolls and then you spawn in this broken track setup up here. So what's happening is just, um, is just a launcher on a, um, on a, a muncher on a launcher, and then that obviously teleports the muncher. The reason it's a launcher that's carrying the muncher is because it's, uh, this is the lowest I can get this hidden, this hard block to break the wall here. So I have to accommodate for that height by using a launcher here. And you'll also notice that at the very beginning of this level, I have two spaces here. Oops. Uh, two spaces here that are completely blank. That is because if I have anything else down here, the all of the broken track setups in this subworld will break. And so I have to have this area blank in order for all of the uh, broken track setups to work properly. So that is why the... The beginning is blank like that. So anyways, uh, as I was saying, to accommodate the height difference, um, see now if, if I were to have this block break instead of way up here, then I could just use a simple cloud on a track. But the launcher here um, allows me to get enough height to get it like sort of above this area. So you can kind of follow where it goes. Then it hits this wall right here. And then the muncher will appear right here, and then the spike ball, two spaces behind it, like right here. So that's why the muncher goes over there. So, yeah, this setup uh, was pretty cool to make. Um, you know, um, this this whole area, in fact, was very uh, was very fun to make. I, I enjoyed making this little trolley section right here. So over here, it's just a uh, thwomp and a bomb. I could have easily made just, you know, a setup like this. 
I could have easily just done this instead, you know, and like put a coin behind the bomb. But, uh, I didn't, you know, so, uh, and the reason was because, I mean, I, I, I didn't need to save any sprites in this level, so I, uh, I mean, not, not in this level, but in this subworld. So, in the main world, I actually had to save a ton of sprites, but, um, I had a lot of extras in the subworld here, so that's why I wasn't, you know, kind of able to do this. Um, so then they get to the CP2 room, and it's like, ha suddenly red coin level. Funny, funny. Um, so, yeah. Um, I guess I'll just start with this door for now. So, uh, what happens here, it's just two timed things, right? So we got big bomb on wings under the lava, and, uh, likewise down here. Um, the reason they don't, um, do their thing is because of the switch state. So obviously when you come into this room, then the switch will be off, which despawns these spike balls. But then when you spawn in from the checkpoint too, then obviously they'll, they'll spawn in and start rolling toward the note blocks. So that's why nothing happens, um, over here. So the other thing is, um... Well, the whole troll here was that you're supposed to, like, wait and kind of sit. I don't know. This was kind of dumb, but, um, it, it worked out for decently, so. Um, yeah. Um. So, this troll here, there is nothing behind this. Obviously, the cannon gets teleported, um, behind the launcher. So, the cannon that's getting teleported is right here. All I'm doing is, similar to the water level, I'm just kind of scrolling the screen in. Just enough to spawn these guys, and then by the time they're, you know... Um, by the time they reach this square, then this, this stuff will spawn, and then everything lines up, basically. So it's just a dumb little cannon troll there. Um, there's nothing with this, it's just to make it look suspicious. Um, but you can get the shiny unharmed. Um, down here it is... Um, it's really, this is really interesting. So, what I, what happened here was I was basically just playing around in the editor and I just, just stumbled on this tech. So what happens is you're actually hitting a hyperspeed object. And that op object is this spring that appears, like, right here. So just kind of watch it closely. Right there. So the, the spring that's appearing right there is this spring over here, which is kind of covered by this saw. Um, what's happening is this it's just timed just right so that when you jump, it will, like, hit you. Well, basically, so... Here, here's a here's a weird thing that happens, right? So if this is not here, then it doesn't work. It, like, kills you for some reason. Wait, uh, let me try this again. Yeah, so it just doesn't work at all. So, like, for whatever reason, the thing that's teleporting has to be overlaid by a block. So it, like, has to go inside of a solid block for some reason in order to work. It's very strange. The other weird thing about this is if I put a coin right here, you'll like, you'll collect it. And it's very strange. Look at this. You collect that coin. Why do you collect that coin? I have no idea, but you, you definitely collect it. And it's super bizarre. I don't know why. But, uh, yeah. So that's some interesting stuff. So yeah, um, hidden block but not really a hidden block sort of thing um so up here it's just like this stuff so uh what's happening is yeah they just go into position like this um and then when you hit the switch there's like a red block right here and then you're supposed to look at it and like think oh when i press the switch it's this this guy's gonna fall so i better put my shell on this side but, uh, yeah, that's what I want you to think, so get wrecked. 
Um, so what's happening to make the muncher appear is this seesaw setup. So when uh, when this cannon falls down here, it'll like push this thwomp up and then like make the thwomp and muncher uh, trigger when you go back into your shell. And then this muncher will like push you into here. So it kind of looks like you're getting sucked by a current under the lava or something. So that's kind of cool. Um, so... What else is there? This is just a switch uh, when you get to a certain distance, like right here. That's all that's for. Um, so this troll right here is very simple. This is using uh, tech from Dangerous to Go Stupid, which was my collab with Stevo a long time ago. Um, so this troll, similar to what happens when you like pull out a bomb and then Link explodes immediately, it's basically the same thing, right? So since the bomb is stacked on the muncher, it doesn't blow up right away because the bomb kind of sinks into the muncher while it's stacked. But immediately when it's touched, then it'll get out of its stack, and then and then it explodes, which is why that happens. And uh, again, this is from uh, Dangerous to Go Stupid. <clears throat> so, yeah. Yeah, so basically this clown car is vibrating so fast that any bomb that touches it will just explode immediately. So, you can sort of see what I'm talking about here by doing this. Or not, actually. So here. Yeah, so any bomb that, that touches this will just explode immediately. Let's watch. Yep. So that's that's the that's the tech. And I don't have it like this because sometimes if you are like scrolling in the screen for whatever reason the bomb will like it takes a moment for the bomb to set to like sink down and that moment that it takes sometimes makes the wall blow up. And so I have to have it like up here so that the bomb like sinks into the muncher while it's falling, if that makes sense. So yeah. Alright, so for this part, very straightforward, right? You kind of all already saw what happens here. The swamp just kind of picks up the, the piranha. This is a stupid troll if you just like sit on this vine for a second, which basically nobody fell for. I just added that in for pure stupid. Um... Over here, this is really weird, right? The, the piranha just kind of goes through this note block for whatever reason. And uh, the way I'm saving sprites here is kind of cool. This this uh, this this uh, tanuki leaf actually will spawn this spring down here. And uh, the reason it's a leaf is because, like, if it were a mushroom or something then the mushroom would just be, like, loose down here, which I kind of don't want. So, I made it a leaf instead, and that just allows the power-up to just go away entirely. So that's kind of cool. So, um, yeah. So, a lot of entity saving going on in this main world because I ran so... I ran completely out of sprites. In fact, I have zero room for more sprites in this level, except for this stupid thing, which probably I could get rid of, but I didn't, so I have zero sprites. Um, so yeah, you kind of already see what happens here. The piranha just goes straight through, and uh, the, straight through the note block, and it also bounces on it, which is why it gets it tight. So yeah, that's, that's all that's happening. So for this troll, it's uh, a fish behind the launcher. So like, if you if you carry the shell all the way to the launcher, the fish will get it, will get you. So that's just a stupid, funny troll there. Um, and then obviously the uh, the flower on the note block just pushes the launcher into the spring down here, and then that's why the spring comes out of the launcher, which is kind of funny, I thought. But uh, yeah. 
So what's going on here, I found this tech while I was actually experimenting. So I was trying to make a setup where, where this cannon would like basically hyperspeed toward you and then like push you into some 50 box or something originally. But what I found out was that it actually makes you get out of the clown car at a certain height. So I just kind of stumbled on this tech by accident, which was really interesting. So, so yeah, you already kind of saw know what happens. The uh, the trigger is just a simple thwomp, and uh, the slope allows for a very specific height, which is cool. So it's just like that. That's all there is to it. It's instantaneous, and um, you can only get out of that. Um, by a very specific margin and I think that involves ducking while you're like going downwards or something weird Yeah, so um, For this troll, it's just this <laughs> So uh, the muncher th this troll actually isn't switch activated, which is interesting. So after the switch activates from this troll this this mole will fall down here and then get into position so once you're right here with the clown car, this mole will trigger the bomb. And then the whole idea here is that you see this Tanuki tail and you like really want it badly. So you just like rush through and uh, this launcher will uh, shoot up at you and then like trap you in this cloud. So uh, the there's a nice little, you know, broken track over here to get this, get these guys to shoot upwards. Um, so for this down here, um, well, actually, wait, uh, let me do this first. So this is pretty self-explanatory, right? And then, uh, Entity Saver down here, um, happens. Um, so... So what's happening here is a lot of people already kind of, uh, figured this out, but what's happening is there's a note block behind this saw. And, uh, when you run, or I mean, when you, when it hits you, like, at a certain point, then you, like, drop anything you're holding. So, I thought, huh, that would be pretty interesting to use for a, for a shell. And, uh, yeah, it turned out really good. I really liked this troll, um, a lot. And, uh, yeah, basically, you just run through, and then the, the icicle makes you drop the shell, and then... You like put it on your head down here, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, very simple. And then obviously spike shell mitt comes out of the pipe. So um, very simple stuff down here. For this part, it's like the springs are being compressed, and obviously I don't see that because they spawn up here in this pipe. So yeah. So what happens is. Um, another sprite saver, right? This this will spawn the uh, the bomb down here, and then the bomb will kind of walk into position over there. So you can see that the switch gets activated twice, right? First the bomb, then the on-off switch. The thwomp is in a very specific place to you know for this for this troll to work, and then what happens is when this block goes away, it's like it gives you a ton of weird momentum. And um, you just go left and into this pit and, unless you're holding right. So that's that's all that happens here. Pretty interesting. Uh, very cost... I mean, the, there's like seven sprites for this one troll here. So pretty costly, but in the end it's pretty funny. So each time they come back into this hub, hub room, I have, to, uh, I have to kill this clown car, right? So what's happening here is that this spike ball um, destroys the question block every time you spawn in and uh, that spawn blocks this this clown car right so each time they come back into the hub room i have to kill his clown car otherwise he'd just be sitting here and uh obviously that we wouldn't want that to happen so i'm killing it from this setup up here uh it's just like a spike guy so yeah this this is a vine block which makes the uh, which makes the red coin section replayable, right? So, what happens is, uh, this, this guy comes and hits this block twice before going into this vine block and killing itself. So, that's pretty cool. 
um, for the part that kills the player. So when you when you beat the level, right, or you almost beat the level, you uh, you get you get booted back into a pipe. And now people are wondering what kills them, right? So it's basically just a broken track, <laughs> as you could imagine. It's literally just a broken track. So what's happening is on the blue state, which is the state you come in after you get booted back in the pipe, this will be facing the other way, which is the same as not being there. And then this is basically a time thing, right? So yeah, it, it literally, the, the reason this cloud is here is because if you're like hugging this wall, then you won't die for whatever reason. So like, let me see if I can get this. Oh, um, I need to be able to go in this door. Watch what happens when I try to hug this wall over here. Yeah, you just don't die. Whereas opposed to not hugging the wall, you actually do die. So this space over here with the cloud is actually necessary to kill them even if they're hugging the wall over on this side. So that's why that's there. And I think that's pretty much it for this room. It's, um, yeah. That's, that's about it. Oh, uh, the dev exit. So yeah, I did put a dev exit in here. So, uh, this block right here has a, has a, um, has a spike shell mitt in it. And what happens is, if you follow this track up here, the spike shell mitt will drop here and then come down here. So it's about, like, ten seconds after you enter this room. So there it is. And then you just break up here, and there is a secret key. Ooh, cool, huh? <laughs> so, yeah. And then I can just win this way. Yeah, so this is so much easier than going through all the red coin sections, like, every single time I want to clear check. So, that's the reason for that. I think that's it, guys. Um, yeah. This has been a real fun level to make, and it's taken quite some time. Again, like two or three months to make this level. A lot of thinking and a lot of planning went into this, but uh, in the end it turned out super well, and I'm really, really happy with it. So, so thank you guys so much for watching. Um, this will probably be my last level in quite some time, or my last video, rather. So, um... If Mario Maker 3 ever comes out, I might decide to come back. Who knows? But I am definitely done with Mario Maker 2. So that's it for me, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and uh, I will see you again.